Hello, Mitch. I see you, Mitch, but I don't hear you. Can you hear me, Mitchell? Oh, okay, so you're not talking. I can't hear you. You want to put on your audio or you rather be off the screen and you rather type in? There you are. I see your hand now. Hi. You got yourself on mute? Huh? There you go. Okay, there you go. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. All right, so you're my the first person to, to chime in. Um, we're gonna wait for others to join. When they come, uh, it'll let me know and I can chime them in with us, okay? Okay. All right, how does my background look, Mitch? Is it okay? Look good. Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. It's not too dark or too light. Uh-uh, looks good. Okay, thank you. So we're waiting for others. It's 6.01 now. We'll wait for others to chime in. Then we'll get started, okay? All right. Uh, I mean. Yep. I'm going I'm to get off video, Mama. You don't have to. Robina, can you hear me? Robina? Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, it's just two people right now, so we're going to give a few more minutes, okay. and then we'll get started, okay? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, someone else just joined in. We're waiting for a couple of other people to join us and then we'll start. There's another person here. I don't know who it is. If you would introduce yourself. Hello, Yvette. Hi. This is Jacqueline Howard. Hi, Jacqueline. How are you? Thank you for joining us. I'm fine, and you? Good. I was wondering who that was. I saw you pop on the screen, but I wasn't sure. Um, we're going to give a few more minutes, and then we're going to start in one more minute, okay? Okay. I don't want to wait too long. You know, people are, come, they'll chime in as they, as they come, and so we don't want to hold everyone else up. I didn't know we were going to be on the video today. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. You do you have ability to come on the audio and video? 
uh, I do, but I'm not, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's okay. I'm not going to introduce you or anything. If you want to, you can, it's up to you. So I'm excited. I want to get started because I don't want to wait. And as others come in, then we'll just, we'll just, you know, bring them up to speed. Okay. 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 So, so welcome to Caregiver Chronicles. This is Friday Night Live, uh, where we can ask Dr. Yvette anything. And so I want to thank you, first of all, for joining us tonight. Um, I want to start by giving you a brief overview of the modules or classes and the guests that are associated with each class. Um, and then we will go into uh, any of the webinar guests who are on that want to just have a little brief, uh, you know, talk about what their experience was. And then um, we will go into questions from the audience. We'll have an open dialogue. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about next week's session as well, okay? So first of all, I wanna tell you about Caregiver Chronicles, uh, the courses that we have and our guests so far. Um, we have our first uh, course is module one, which is about the caregiver experience or the caregiver. What is a caregiver? And so our guest for that particular module or class uh, was Yale White. Uh, she is with the Alzheimer's Association, um, and she came on and, and spoke on that particular class and talked about her experience as a caregiver, the duties and responsibilities of a caregiver. She talked about caregiver burnout. Uh, she talked about personal ex her personal experience as a caregiver. Um, and she also uh, talked about neglectful caregiving, and adult protective services, child protective services was discussed on that particular class, and this was our first class. And then um, we just talked about those who, uh, you know, her, her role as a, a, a advocate for those who are Alzheimer's and that type of thing. And so it was a really great uh, session with, with Yale White, and she is with the Alzheimer's Association, uh, the Beverly Hills uh, office here. So the next module, our module number two, was understanding and educating yourself or your loved one on the diagnosis. And the guest for that particular uh, module, class number two, was Dick Glennis Hall. And uh, she is a registered nurse, and she works at UCLA Medical Center. Um, she talked about the medical professionals and getting a clear understanding of the diagnosis for her loved one. Um, she talked about accepting the medical diagnosis for her loved one, requesting a second opinion, she talked about. Um, we talked about educating yourself on the diagnosis, educating yourself on the prognosis or the expected development of the diagnosis, if you will. Um, and then we also talked about support groups for family members and for the, uh, the loved one as well, the person who is uh, sick. So um, it was a really great session with her as well. Uh, she is a nurse, and she told me how she basically was uh, an advocate for her father, uh, who had not recently had recently passed, and so she took care of him. But she was basically on top of it because she of her, of her profession, being a nurse. She knows what should be expected, and so that was our second class uh, that we talked about. And so then our third class, uh, we have caring for a sick loved one. Uh, one or uh, helping family members recognize the member's illness. And so our guest for that particular module, uh, that was module number three, uh, was, was Helen Harris. And she uh, was a caregiver for her sister who had um, Alzheimer's disease uh, for several years. And so she took care of her sister until she passed. Um, and so she shared her experience um, about uh, just the, the change in behavior because her sister had some cognitive, uh, you know, changes as well as um, changes in her physical agility, her ability to ambulate and that type of thing. She had changes in her mental, her physical, and her emotional uh, capacities. Um, she was unable to handle her activities of daily living. Um, and so, so those are some of the things that uh, she 
spoke about in that particular module, and that was class number three. Um, she also talked about family denial about the loved one's illness and when it's necessary to seek medical help. And so that was our third module for Caregiver Chronicles. And then our fourth module, um, our fourth class, was observing your loved ones and the family members' religious belief. And in that module, we had uh, Pastor Jacob Johnson, who is a minister uh, or the pastor of Growing Valley Baptist Church um, in the Lancaster Palmdale area. Um, he's also a national officer for the National Baptist Convention. Uh, he's uh, the uh, vice moderator, I believe, for that convention. And so he came on and he talked about incorporating your loved ones, religious beliefs in the plan of care. Um, he talked about contacting the clergy for your loved one. He talked about contacting the clergy for the family members. And he talked about uh, his experience as a minister and a pastor, uh, having those who are ill or those who have uh, had loved ones to pass on and working with them in the grief uh, counseling and that type of thing. And he also talked about requesting the church member visits uh, for your loved one and requesting the clergy visits with the loved ones. So those are uh, some of the things that we talked about in that module with Pastor Johnson. Um, he shared his personal experience as well. And then in our fifth module, we had a healthy lifestyle, uh, which leads to longevity. That was the name of the class or the module. Um, and we had a guest for that particular module, um, and his name was Dr. Lamar Price. He is an iridologist, and I don't know if you're familiar with iridology, but what they do is they um, can look into your eyes and they can tell exactly what's wrong with you, or they can look in your eyes and just kind of uh, understand your uh, medical or your biological makeup and make a, a you know, determination as to what you can do to uh, improve your biological being. Um, and so he is with Dynamic Health Solutions. Uh, he came in and talked about what constitutes a healthy living, um, medication and physical uh, eating to live versus living to eat, uh, mental, physical, and emotional health. Um, he talked about exercise and he also talked about conventional versus holistic medicine. Uh, which his, uh, his specialty is holistic medicine as opposed to uh, conventional medicine, which is medicine that's prescribed by the medical doctors. And so um, it was a really great session with him as well. And now we're going to go to module number six. Um, we had, uh, we had a two, P two guests on this particular module, and it was really great. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, we had a uh, physician's assistant, uh, Dr. Moore Hodge was on, and then we also had Dr. Morishigi, Heidi Morishigi was uh, also the psychologist. So we had a physician's assistant and a psychologist on that particular module. Um, and that particular module, we talked about the psychological effects on the loved one when they're unable to handle their activities of daily living. Uh, the psychological effects on the caregiver as the primary caregiver, um, as a primary provider. We talked about psychological effects on the family, knowing that your loved one is ill and they may or may not recover. We also talked about the family caregiver versus a hired caregiver. Um, we talked about sources of support for caregivers, sources of support for the loved one who is ill. And then we also talked about trusting the medical professionals ensuring that your loved one gets the maximum services that they deserve when they are ill, uh, knowing what services are needed for your loved one. We talked about monitoring the services that are provided to your loved one. Um, we also talked about full services received versus the bare minimum. Um, and then we talked about the second opinion, uh, which is really important when you have a diagnosis for your loved one you want to consider getting a second opinion and that way you can um, determine, you know, what the best plan of care is for your loved one. And so uh, we talked about those things. We also talked about general medicine versus specialty medicine in that particular module. And that was module number six. So we're going to go on to module number seven. And in that particular module, 
We talked about uh, helping family members address legal matters. Um, and myself was the uh, actual, I wasn't the guest, but I was the actual um, presenter for that particular module. And the importance of including your loved ones in all the decision making and the cognitively, if they're cognitively sound, if they're able to make their own decisions, then it's important that you allow them to uh, be a part of that process. Uh, we talked about the importance of uh, when you should make this, uh, sure legal documents are, are available or completed. Uh, when you find out when your loved one is ill, what you should do to make sure that all legal matters are handled. Uh, so that way, if the uh, loved one is not able to make decisions for themselves, um, then you would be able to uh, designate or they would be able to designate someone who would do so. Um, and so that was a part of uh, that particular module. That's module number seven. And then we'll go on to module number eight, the decision maker for your loved one. Um, that is also uh, my, uh, I was also the presenter for that particular module. Um, the who will make decisions when your loved one is unable to. We talked about power of attorney needing to uh, legally assign someone and what to do if there's no legal document available and your loved one is unable to make decisions, how that works. We talked about next of kin, spouses, children, etc. Talked about fiduciary and if the loved one has a significant amount of finances and how that would work and how to uh, have that monitored by someone who has been uh, assigned to make to monitor that. Um, and then we also talked about capacity declaration, which is uh, completed by the medical doctor to determine uh, if the patient or the loved one is able to make their own decisions. Uh, we also talked about guardianship and payees for the loved one. And then we'll talk about, uh, we talked about, well, so we'll go on to module number nine, where we had a guest presenter for that particular module. And that class was insurance, talking about Medicare, Medi-Cal, private insurance for your loved one. Um, and so in that particular module, uh, we had a guest, uh, Lanidra Munson. She is an independent contractor with Medicare, um, and she is very uh, astute on Medicare, Medi-Cal, the insurance matters. Uh, she contracts with several of the uh, insurance providers like Anthem Blue Cross, uh, Blue Shield, and uh, some of the HMOs she contracts with. She also talked about private insurance. So that's important for uh, one to understand when they have a loved one that is ill so they can navigate the medical systems and know what the medical insurance will cover for them as well. So that was module number nine, or class number nine. And then we had class or module number 10, where we talked about identifying community resources that are available to your loved ones. And those are some of the resources that are available for uh, either moderate or low income, uh, like uh, in-home supportive services. Uh, we talked about uh, home delivered meals, meals on wheels. We talked about uh, Project Angel Food, which is a, a meal program for those who have a specific diagnosis. And then we talked about transportation, senior handicapped, um, public transportation or medical transport. We talked about those things. And I was the presenter for this particular module. We talked about respite care. Um, and then we also talked about uh, the entity that you could dial to get resources and support, uh, which is 211. So that's, that was module number 10, or class number 10. And then class number 11 was uh, on durable medical equipment, like wheelchairs, walkers, canes, um, commodes, hospital beds, and that type of thing. Those types of equipment, that was module 11. And we had two guests for that particular module. Uh, we had Dejeni Worku, who is the administrator and owner of uh, Confidence Medical Supplies. And then we also had uh, Samuel Palomino, who is the marketing director for that same organization, Confidence Medical Supplies. And so the, the two of them were on the webinar, and what we talked about was um, durable medical equipment, what insurance covers and does not cover. 
We talked about wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds, commodes, canes. Uh, we also talked about the TARS, which is a uh, request to pay for equipment for those who have Medi-Cal. Um, and so that was a really great session because it helped uh, those to understand what is covered by insurance and what is not. Um, so that was uh, module number 11. And then we are gonna go on to module number 12, knowing when your loved one needs a caregiver and myself as the presenter. Um, talked about uh, signs that your loved one needs a caregiver. And some of the signs are when they're unable to handle their activities of daily living. They're unable to dress, bathe, cook, and clean for themselves. Um, they're, un they're confused, maybe forgetful. They might even try to cook something and leave it on the stove. Um, and so it's really important that, that you know the signs when, it's, uh, when your loved one needs a caregiver. Um, and so that was also uh, the uh, module uh, for number 12. Uh, we talked about poor hygiene, um, when your loved one is accusing family members of stealing, because sometimes if they have some cognitive impairment, they get confused. Um, and so that, that was also discussed in that module. We talked about poor eating habits and not recognizing family members and friends. So we'll go on to module number 13, or class number 13. Uh, we had a, another guest for that particular module. Um, and her name was Sherry Wright. She is with All About Love and Care. And the module for this class, uh, uh, the uh, topic is Searching for Screening and Securing the Caregiver. So that's important because uh, when you have someone that you want to care for your loved one, you have a specific person that you want to be that caregiver. And so finding the caregiver is critical. Uh, family members as caregivers was discussed. Uh, friends as caregivers was discussed. Uh, uh, attributes of a caregiver, what type of care person you would want to be a caregiver for your loved one. Monitoring the caregiver and making sure that they're doing what's uh, expected of them and doing what's best for your loved one is, is important as well. Uh, we talked about caregiver burnout, and we also talked about signs of abuse, neglect, uh, and uh, uh, other areas of concern for your loved one. And we also talked about respite care for your loved one. So that was really important as well. Um, and so we'll go on to the next module, uh, which is module number 14. Um, that module is still being developed, but that particular module is when it's time to consider a facility, a skilled nursing facility, an assisted living facility, a board and care for your loved one. And so uh, the areas that we will have in that particular module is home versus a facility for your loved one. When it's time to consider placing your loved one in a facility, understanding your loved one's finances to cover facility costs, because it can be very costly, um, the types of facilities that are available, like assisted living facilities, skilled nursing facilities, board and cares, et cetera. Um, we also gonna talk about monitoring your loved one after placement in a facility, because when you put your loved one in a facility, you wanna make sure that uh, they are receiving the appropriate care and treatment that you would want them to have. And so it's important that you monitor them uh, probably closer than you would at home. So uh, that was module number 14. And then module number 15 is uh, regarding addressing family dynamics or challenges or conflict or grief. Um, and then we had a guest speaker for that particular module and her name was Jacqueline Howard. Uh, she was a caregiver for her parents. She was a caregiver for several other individuals. Um, and so she's also a, a licensed cosmetologist, but she talked about family dynamics, um, anticipatory grief when you know that your loved one is, is you know, uh, is declining, if you will. She talked about family challenges, family conflict. She also talked about family members who do participate and then family members who don't participate. 
we talked about financial abuse and some other areas that are important with regard to family matters. And then we had our module number 16, uh, which is home health. And we had a guest speaker for that particular module. And her name is Martine Dangerville. She is the owner of Home Health Agency. And she talked about home health and de define home health for us, what that means, uh, nurses and physical therapists and speech pathologists and respiratory therapists uh, and social workers going to the home to see your loved one. Uh, we talked about what that means and what the doctor's role is with regard to home health, how the process works, and the whole, the whole uh, makeup of home health agency or providing home health in the residence for your loved one. So that was a really great module as well. And then for our module number 17, we talked about hospice or class 17. And our guest for that particular module is Robina Verdugo. Uh, she is the owner and CEO of uh, Verdugo Hospice. Robino, I'm sorry, Krikorian is her name, and she is the owner of Verdugo Hospice. And um, so she talked about hospice defined. She talked about the terminal diagnosis. She talked about no proactive measures to, to sustain life. Is When hospice is implemented, uh, the patient must have a diagnosis that reflects that they have about six months to live. Um, we talked about the physician's order for life-sustaining treatment or a post or a DNR, which you've heard that term before, do not resuscitate, um, that, it, that it has to be in place. Um, we also talked about a morphine drip, uh, which is something that I asked her to discuss because it was something I experienced, uh, had some interaction with, with my mother when I was taking care of her. Um, we talked about hospital versus facility admission immediately stops hospice services. And we talk about other areas that reflect hospice or when your loved one uh, is in the process of transitioning. Uh, some people recover from hospice, some people don't. Some people go on and transition, some people may recover from their illness and come off of hospice and go backwards to home health. So that was a really great session as well. Um, and then we had uh, module number 18, was planning for your loved one. Uh, planning for your loved one uh, transition or final wishes. Uh, and we had a guest for that particular module. And his name is Ray Hodges. He is with Inglewood Park Cemetery. Uh, he talked about the final arrangements and the final wishes for your loved one. Knowing your loved one's final wishes, the funeral arrangements, mortuary arrangements, we talked we talk about cemetery arrangements and cremation versus burial and cost of those items as well or those areas as well. And so that was a really great informative uh, module because it, it lets you know the, that uh, the final wishes and the, uh, the uh, arrangements for your loved one can be very expensive. And then we have module number 19 where we had uh, understanding medication. We had Dr. Janice Cooper, she's a pharmacist. Uh, she has her own pharmacy in Hawthorne, California. Uh, the pharmacy is, is called Hawthorne Pharmacy. And she talked about pharmacist duties. She discussed knowing the medication and its purposes. Um, she discussed knowing the medication and its effects versus the side effects. She talked about outdated medication. Um, she talked about medication reconciliation, uh, when you uh, make sure that the patient is taking the right medication. Uh, she, we talked about uh, the distribution of opioids and how that is such an, uh, a prevalent issue now with uh, individuals who are in pain as well as individuals who are substance users and abusers. And we talked about the opioid crisis. So that was a really great module um, as well. And those are the modules. The last module, of course, would be the recap of Caregiver Chronicles, where um, I myself as the course developer, Dr. Jackson, would uh, 
give a recap on the modules and what they entail. So I want to thank you all for listening. Um, I want to also, uh, I think we have some guests that are on, those who uh, spoke in the webinars. Do we have any of our webinar guests on the Zoom call uh, today? Yes, hi Yvette. Hi, is that Robina? Yes, hi. Victorian. Okay, and you 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 want to introduce introduce yourself? Of course, yes. Hi. Um, so, um, as you mentioned, um, I um, am with Verdugo Home Health and Hospice. Primarily, uh, we started with hospice care. So, um, hospice care is a very good service for patients who are identified as um, having terminal illness. And um, I'm very, um, actually very impressed by all the sessions that you are going to be presenting and um, very informative. Uh, we're covering basically all the um, aspects of what a caregiver actually will encounter when they're taking uh, care of a loved one. So great job, Yvette. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there anyone else on the line that's, that was a webinar guest? I think I see Mrs. Howard on the line. Yes, I'm on. Oh, okay. How you doing, Mrs. Howard? I'm doing fine in yourself. Okay, you just want to give a brief of, of your uh, experience at, um, during the webinar or during the, uh, the course or the module? Um, yes. I we think your module... About, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, we basically talked about the dynamics of caregiving right right yeah which is quite interesting um wow <laughs> well basically you just you do what you need to do to make sure that the person is comfortable um you communicate with them and ask them what their needs are Right. Make sure their medication is right. You make sure that what they're eating is properly and right. Uh, you have to keep communicating with them. Right, right. Right. And I think the module that you uh, were the guest on was module number 15. We were addressing the family dynamics and challenges or conflicts and grief of, of the care and, and grief for the family and, and conflict amongst the family and that type of thing. So. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Howard, for that. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so I, I just want to open up, and if you have any questions from the audience, I want to answer any questions that you might have. Does anyone have any questions? We can have an open dialogue. I know this, I think that Caregiver Chronicles is so important because there are many, many people in their homes that don't have a clue about what to do and then a loved one gets sick and then they have to try to figure it out and it's very uh frustrating it's very difficult if you will if you don't have someone to guide and direct you and that was the whole purpose of the development of caregiver chronicles is to have a platform where you can go and get any information regarding caregiving and so that's why i decided to uh, incorporate this program and put it together um, because it's critical for those who are caregivers and not only the caregivers, the families as well, or the, the actual patient or the loved one uh, to know what they can and, or what they should do in, in certain instances. And then also to be available to them to answer any questions that they might have and just uh, provide them with resources and support. Um, just want you to know that we cover all states. We're not just in California. We cover all of the United States. So if there is anyone who has a need for some resources and support to find out what the, the information is in your state, we are quite capable of doing that as well. So I just wanted to make sure you all were aware of that, okay? All righty, so. Um, yes, um, I wanted to add um, about um, the difficulty of taking care of patients at home, um, especially when they come home with uh, acute illness from hospitals. 
Um, yes. So, and um, a lot of times family members or caregivers, uh, they don't know what resources are available for them. Um, they, um, and a lot of times they are encouraged to send their loved ones to a nursing home because that's the, I guess, the easiest way, but a lot of times it's not the best way. Um, right. Sometimes it is appropriate for a, a patient to go to a nursing home for rehabilitation, but a lot of times um, the hospitals, uh, social workers, they identify some of the patients as appropriate for a nursing home, a step down to a nursing home, but a lot of times also those patients can go home with adequate help, getting help from pharmacy, from DME, from home health, hospice, uh, transportation, um, all the other resources, uh, meals, social services, everything. Um, a lot of times, at times these opportunities are missed and the patients end up at nursing homes. Right. Which, um, sometimes it's not appropriate for them. They can get the same care or even better type of care at home. So it's good to know that uh, there's all this help out there and um, it's available to them and it's, it's, it's yeah. helpful to help them. Right, right, yeah, that is important, very important. Yep, so, okay. Uh, any other comments or uh, thoughts that you wanna share with the group or with the, with the uh, participants? If not, then what I want to do I have a is... question. Oh, sure. Yes. I have a question. Uh-huh. So unless you don't ask the question about the resources, they're not just going to reveal them to you. I'm trying to... I'm, you said if you don't ask the question about... Going back to what... Uh, what is her name? Robin? What she was saying? Oh, so a lot of times okay. when... A lot of times when you know, you've had an accident or you're in the hospital and they put you in the rehab okay. facility. Okay. okay, so when you're in that rehab facility, before they release you to come home or they're trying to put you in a, another place, you know, where you don't come home, if you don't ask the questions about the resources that they have available to you, then you would never find out. Is that true? Well, it depends because it depends on the person. A lot of times people don't want to ask questions or they don't know what questions to ask. So if they're going to, you saying if their person is in a facility, they're in a rehab, and then when they leave the rehab, they're going to go to another facility for long-term care. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so you're saying what resources are available. Usually you'll get the resources like, maybe insurance matters handled and that type of thing. But as far as your loved one going to a facility, in order for them to go to a facility, that's going to have to be paid for. So you will definitely find out from the rehab about medical insurance because they cannot transfer your loved one or your family member to that other facility unless the insurance matter is addressed. Um, and as far as other resources are concerned, if they're going to a, like a skilled nursing facility for long-term care, most of the time their needs will be met. Their food will be taken care of, their, you know, their medication, all of the ADLs will be met. They'll be mm -hmm. taken care of them. They'll be bed dressing and bathing them and making sure that all of you know, the things that they need are available to them. But the financial piece, of course, that's going to have to be addressed before they go. And so that's the more critical piece. Is there other resources you were speaking of? No, you pretty much covered it right there. Okay, okay. Yeah, you pretty much covered it right there. Because see, a lot of people don't know to ask questions when they're in a situation like that. Right, that's correct. That's correct. Right. I agree. And, and, and you know, I, I'm telling you because I lived it. Uh, when my mother got sick and I had no clue. And so every day was a learning experience for me for nine years. Every day I learned something different. But I, 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 it was so much knowledge that I was like, this is knowledge that I can share with somebody else, somebody else who has right. a loved one that gets sick. And, you know, we give, right. share that knowledge with them so that they don't have to try to figure out what to do if, if mommy stops eating or if mommy stops walking or, or daddy or whomever stops walking or if they start uh, doing things that are not normal as far as their baseline is concerned with their, you know, uh -huh. ability is. So... 
uh, you know, that's, that's critical. Um, and so I, I can't imagine stepping into what I stepped into knowing what I know now um, regarding caregiving because it was a blind situation. I, yes. I totally agree with you. But what I find out also is, is no question is a dumb question unless you don't ask the question. I agree. Yes. Right. Yeah. No, well, there's no dumb question. The question, the, the dumb question is the one that you don't ask. Because if you I agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. If you don't ask the question, then you'll never know. So there is no dumb question. Yeah. Okay. Always should ask a question. If you have a, a concern about something, ask. You know, a lot of times people don't want you to ask them or if you kind of, you ask them and then you kind of, you know, like, continue to ask them different questions and sometimes people get frustrated, but it's your loved one. You're the advocate for them. And so it's up to you right. to continue to make sure that whatever, uh, you know, whatever um, resources are available that you have found out about them, know if they're appropriate for your loved one and make sure that they get them. Because a, a, a lot of times people really won't tell you what's available right. unless you ask them. And you don't even know what to right. that's why yeah that's why i asked that question because i found myself when i was in that situation i asked a lot of questions and people would look at me and they would why is she asking all these questions and i'd be like no question is a dumb question unless you don't ask the question if you don't know you should just ask right. as many questions as possible but you'd be surprised that people who are in the healthcare profession unfortunately and uh rabina you probably can uh <laughs> attest to this People who are in the healthcare profession, some of them, when you ask them questions, they don't always give you the full gamut, if you will. They won't give you all of the information. They'll give you some of it, but they won't give it all to you. And so yeah. that that is, you know, difficult. Um, um, a lot, um, like in our um, healthcare system, um, what's being emphasized a lot um, over, over the course of, course of all these years of evolving what health care is. Um, and it's becoming very, very um, popular and very uh, important for all the nurses and all the healthcare providers. Um, they are emphasized and they are taught that they have to be providing teaching. So from the, from the healthcare providers um, point of view, um, they are being trained more and more to, to be providing a lot of teaching and encouraging the caregivers to learn. Um, and also the caregivers are also with um, development of all the technologies and all the videos and everything. They're, they're more empowered to learn. Um, they can go on YouTube and learn how to do a task and the nurses' jobs are much easier. So. As, as the technology and the willingness to teach and willingness to learn is uh, becoming more popular, it's, it's getting much easier to take care of uh, a, a very, very complicated case. Um, if there is a, a good teacher and there is a good learner and there's a willingness to actually take on a challenge and learn something that maybe they would never imagine as a caregiver they can do, but they are, they become empowered and they learn and they do a great, great job. Right, right. Yeah, so it's, it's important to share information. A lot of times some people get information, they don't want to share it, but it's, it's critical to share information because you never know when you might need that information. Yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes. Rebecca? Yes, yeah. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. So you never know when you might need that information and, and um, you would want somebody to come and give you the full gamut as opposed to saying, okay, we're well, piecemealing it to you a little bit at a time. You know what I mean? And so that's really important. Um, just providing resources and information and support uh, for your loved one. So, yeah. Any other questions? So that's basically it. I want to invite you all back for next Friday. Uh, we'll same time, same place. We are going to be live again for Caregiver Chronicles, uh, Friday Night Live. Um, ask Dr. Yvette anything. We want to make sure that we're sharing information. 
And we also want to remind you that you can register for the courses. That information is available as well. Uh, so please uh, register for the courses and you can uh, have access to this information. It is, a, it is vital information. We have some very knowledgeable people that have uh, joined our modules and that have uh, shared their uh, information with us. Um, and so we look forward to you joining in with us. Okay, I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight and I'll see you next Friday on uh, Friday Night Live. God bless. Thank you.